This is a uh, diamond abrasive bonded to a steel plate. I think there's a, a nickel a nickel plate that's in the bonded on. This is a dia sharp or, or a um, DMT, a dual sharp. I'm sorry, uh, which is just a plate. Uh, both diamond coated plates are bonded to a pretty stable plastic. This is an extra coarse, indicated by the black dot. This is a coarse. So this is, I believe. If I'm wrong here, let's see. Black is about 220 uh, uh, grit in the uh, the old uh, U.S. system. The blue is about 325 grit. So we're talking about you know 220 to 320. Those are grits you use on guitars all the time, right? So nothing real special here. Diamond is pretty durable, uh, fast cutting, uh, fairly expensive. This is $100 uh, tool. So uh, realistically. Uh, Get the big one because uh, you've got a lot of area to use on it, and it, uh, it's actually the bigger they are, the flatter they seem to be for some bizarre reason. You'd think it would be the other way around. So I'm going to use this to rapidly cut the uh, rapidly restore an edge. In other words, once I've rounded over this bevel, we saw that already. Once I've kind of screwed up that edge, let's see if I can. Now. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to burnish this over, and this is in a lot of ways what a dull blade looks like. It's rolled over, in some cases it might be smoothly worn top and bottom, but bottom line is that you need to take all this material off to get back to a nice clean, so we're kind of getting there, a nice clean edge here and then we'll polish this and polish that and we'll be good to go. So I'm going to take a blade that is uh, kind of worn and we'll go ahead and uh, reshape it with the diamond stone and then we're going to put an edge on it with the 8000 grit and you're sitting here going where's the rest of the sharpening system and the fact is this is all we need it's a two stone okay. sharpening and it works because the diamond does a pretty good job of taking this dulled area off the bevel refining this and the Norton 8000 grit stone uh, is just an incredible um, uh, stone. It, it really is uh, very uniform, very fast cutting, uh, leaves very little in the way of scratches. You can uh, take a blade that uh, fresh off this diamond stone which is fairly coarse, put it on here and it will cut fast enough so that you don't have to go through all the intermediate grits. It's, it's a real good system. Now. I just noticed that I hadn't flattened this stone out. Water stones need to be flat, right? Isn't that a terrible, you know, it takes all this time to do and everything else? Well, we can use diamond stone. I'm just going to go ahead and rub them together in the bucket. And if you notice, the low spots are dark. The uh, spots that I just cut with the diamond stone, which is flat, are, are a little bit lighter color. And tell you what, I'm even going to go to the coarse stone here. There we go, and now see we're close to flat here, there we go, okay, I'll just go ahead and rinse it off a little bit, and you can see how long it took to flatten a stone, so there's, honestly, there's no excuse not to do a good job of flattening your water stones. The Nortons are nice because they don't have to be flat very often. This, uh, this guide, and this time it's a uh, plain blade, so it's going to actually be about 38 millimeter. And we're on. Okay, now right now there's no burr on the back of that that blade. In other words, this edge is a little bit rounded over. We've got to cut past that to get a uh, edge that we can rapidly hone. And actually, I'll flip this over and I'll. Save myself a little bit of polishing time by using the, the coarse surface. Okay, not quite a burr yet. Now, of course, this is a plane blade, and uh, the one thing I had problems with when I started using a plane was that uh, oftentimes I would find that I left little tracks on, on wood when the edge of the plane would kind of track along and, and cut it square. Anybody else that get plane tracks in their way? Scratches, sure. Scratches. So, caused by these sharp edges here. So, I started out, I, I dubbed the edge over and that kind of worked, but it didn't really work very well. Well, what I've done for the last 20 years is 
I do sort of a differential sharpening. What I'm going to do is to get just a slight curve in the blade. In other words, I'm going to, when that blade is on the wood, I want sort of a, a radius edge, very slight radius, something on the order of 128th of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to do about 10 strokes centered pressure and then because this honing guide is such a narrow wheel I'm going to actually put a bunch of pressure on the left hand side do about 10 strokes here I'm going to do about 10 strokes on the right hand side and I should be getting pretty close to a good Burr. Now the other thing you'll see is that the polished part of the bevel is a little curved, which indicates I've got sort of a, a uh, curved edge built in there, right? Once I get done honing, I'll be pretty close to having that very slight radius in blade. And again, this is not my technique. This is something I think Charles Worth and a couple other people in the furniture industry came up with long ago. This has got a pretty good... Can you feel if there's a burr there? Yes. Okay, so we're ready to hone this now. We've got a little bit of a curve in the blade, so I'm going to put it on the uh, 8,000 grit stone. And all I'm going to do is the same thing I did on the diamond stone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About ten strokes over here. About ten strokes on this side. And I'm probably... My daughter's 15, so I can actually use this now. It's a baby thing, you know. So we're pretty shiny here. We could probably stand to do a little bit more work. You can see how that's getting polished now. So I'll go ahead and we'll do another set. This becomes pretty automatic. Okay. And I think that's probably a pretty good edge. But we still have a little bit of a burr on the back. And again, we're going to do what we did with the Scary Sharp. We're going to put this on the stone, lay it flat. And again, we're going to get rid of that wire edge. A couple more strokes. Hit the wire edge again. And we are, I think, pretty much done with this blade. So let's see. Yeah, we can stand and polish up the back, but my guess is that it's working. we're shaving again. Okay, not great. We could probably take a little bit more time and get a better edge on that. I could probably stand and polish out that one corner. I always wondered why Todd never has forearm hair. Me and me and leg hair. <laughs> sharp plane. We've got a reasonably sharp chisel. I'm going to have to go ahead and adjust that blade back a little bit. I'm just about there, but that's fairly sharp. Plane. Okay, so I, I've been saying it should take no more than a minute to get a decent edge, so I saved this guy. Somebody got a watch? Let's see how long it takes. And go. Work under pressure. Yeah. I probably won't make a minute, but we'll we'll come close. Make it tight. That's pretty good. And we're done. <laughs> Huh? 50 seconds. 50 seconds, under a minute. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, we're doing okay. Okay, so it doesn't take that long. It's not that hard to do. Uh, it should be pretty simple.